हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल नॉलेज इज पावर टुडे एम हियर विद द टॉपिक नॉर्मल लेवल आई विल आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द नॉर्मल लेवल एज वेल एज द एब नॉर्मल लेवल आई विल डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन द ट्रू लेवल पेन एज वेल एज फॉल्स लेवल पेन एंड एट लास्ट आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द स्टेजेस ऑफ लेवल सो बिफोर कमिंग टू द थ्योरी टॉपिक ऑफ लेवल लेट अस वॉच अ वीडियो हाउ अ बेबी इज डिलीवर्ड आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग ऑल दिस प्रोसीजर स्टेप बाय स्टेप इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट वे and in a very easy way so at first let us discuss about labor so do you know what is labor labor is a series of events that take place in a genital organ in an effort to expel the viable products of conception so the viable products of conception are fetus then the placenta and the placental membranes so it will be excel expel out of the home through the vagina so it is the physiological process where the baby or the fetus will come out of the womb through the vagina into the outer world this is called as labor the baby is generally delivered into the outside world between the 38 weeks to 42 completed weeks of pregnancy and if the baby is delivered before 37 completed weeks then the baby is delivered as preterm baby whereas if the baby is delivered after 42 weeks the baby is termed as postterm delivery is the expulsion or extraction of a viable fetus out of the womb now let us discuss about the normal labor also known as utosia labor is called normal if it fulfills the following criteria the baby should be spontaneous in onset and he or she should be delivered at term The baby should have fertile presentation without any undue prolongation. The baby should be delivered with natural termination with minimal aids. Then the baby should not have any complications after the birth, as well as the mother should be healthy. Now let us discuss about the abnormal labor. Abnormal labor is also known as dystocia. Any deviation from the definition of normal labor, it is called abnormal labor. Labor in case of other presentation other than vertex or having some complication even with vertex presentation it will adversely affect the maternal as well as the fetal prognosis it is also an example of abnormal labor apart from that if the mother is having weak uterine contraction and the mother is unable to give voluntary muscle effect abnormal maternal pelvis if the mother is having abnormality in the birth canal all this may leads to abnormal labor or dystocia now let us discuss about the true labor pain and false labor pain if a mother is having true labor pain then she will suffer from painful uterine contractions that will be at regular intervals the frequency of contraction will increase gradually as well as the intensity and duration of contraction increases it is associated with so progressive effacement and dilatation of the cervix is present in case of two labor pain there will be descending of the presenting part there will be formation of the bag of four water and the pain will be not relieved by sedatives or enema now coming for the false labor pain the false labor pain are characterized by the pain will be dull it will not be sharp then it is confined only to lower abdomen or in groin areas it is associated with hardening of the uterus false labor pain they have no other features of true labor pain as we have discussed previously and it is generally relieved by analgesics the labor pain is throughout the pregnancy and painless braxton hicks contraction with simultaneously hardening of the uterus will occur the contraction are irregular and do not increase in frequency and regularity this contraction sense the character become more powerful in case of true labor pain pain more oftenly felt in front of the abdomen and it is radiating towards the thigh at last let us discuss about the different stages of labor there are four stages of labor the first stage of labor it start from the onset of true labor pain and it will end after the full dilatation of the cervix it is in other words the cervical stage of labor coming for the second stage of labor it starts from the full dilatation of the cervix 
and ends with the expulsion of the fetus from the birth canal. It also has two phases, the propulsive or passive phase. The propulsive or passive phase, it starts from full dilatation up to the descent of the presenting part to the pelvic floor. Secondly, the expulsive or active phase is distinguished by maternal bearing down efforts and ends with the delivery of the baby. Now coming for the third stage of labor, it begins after the expulsion of the fetus and ends with expulsion of the placenta and placental membranes. Then coming for the last stage or the fourth stage of labor, it is a stage of observation for at least one hour after the expulsion of the baby. During this period, maternal vitals, uterine retraction and any vaginal bleeding are monitored. Baby is also examined. This is done to ensure that both the mother and the baby are healthy and well without any complication further. Now let us understand this concept with the help of diagrams. So in this diagram, it has been showed that the cervix is effaced or not. So in the diagram A, please have a look on it. Before the labor begins, the cervix is not effaced. Then in the figure B, it has been showed that the cervix is 60% effaced. Then in the diagram C, have a look on it. Cervix is fully effaced. Do you know what is effacement? Effacement is the process by which the muscular fibers of the cervix are pulled upward and merges with the fibers of the lower uterine segment. The cervix becomes thin during the first stage of labor or in case of pre-gravida, the effacement occurs after the dilatation of the cervix but in case of multipara mother, both occur simultaneously. Expulsion of mucus plug is caused by effacement. Next in this diagram it has been showed the second stage of labor. The time duration to complete the second stage of labor in case of primigravi mother is 2 hours and 30 minutes in multipara mother. Now have a look on the picture of the third stage of labor. The average duration is about 15 minutes in both primigravi and multipara mother. The duration is, however, reduced to 5 minutes in case of active management of labor. So, I will be discussing about the management of labor all stages in my next second part video. Now, coming for the last stage of labor, the fourth stage of labor, also known as observation stage. Here, the baby should be assessed. The mother should have regular assessments at least one hour to minimize the complications. The assessment of the heart rate, blood pressure as well as the temperature for the first initial 24 hours after birth is very essential. As well as the most important thing is to monitor the amount of blood loss after the delivery of the baby because the normal blood loss is about 500 ml. If it exceeds more than 500 ml, there is a chance that the mother may suffer from PPH that is the postpartum hemorrhage. So we'll be discussing about the PPH in my coming tutorial video. Apart from that, there is a chance that the mother may suffer from infections. That is why for all these reasons, the mother needs observation as well as the baby needs observation. So guys, this is all about the normal labor, about the different stages of labor. I have also discussed in today's lecture about the true labor pain and false labor pain. Also, I have differentiated between the etosia and dystosia. So, hope you all guys got brief idea regarding the normal labor in a very easy and brief way. Thank you guys for watching this video. So, for more useful videos, please like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to give your valuable feedback. And if you want me to discuss some topics related to medical or nursing topics, you can also suggest the topics below in the comment section and I will be discussing later in the coming videos. So thank you.